Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, or good morning if you're based in the UK like myself. Uh, thank you very much for a nice introduction, Kardula Dirk. I, I'm very pleased to be here. I represent the University of Surrey and more specifically the Centre for Sustainability and Wellbeing in the Visitor Economy. And today I'm going to speak about the opportunities and challenges of tourism, hospitality, food waste management at the destination level. It's a big, big topic. Um, and my colleagues joke, they say that I'm a wasted academic because they do not understand my uh, passion for food waste. Um, so I could speak about this topic for hours, but unfortunately the time is limited. So therefore I'm going to give you just a flavor of what the challenge of um, uh, food waste is about when it comes to the context of tourism hospitality industries. So um, you may be familiar with this um, information already, but um, as the Romans would say, repetition is the mother of learning. So I'd like to remind you that food waste is a major societal challenge as defined by the United Nations. And this is because about one third of all the food which is produced at a global scale for human consumption is either lost or wasted. And I would like to say that when it comes to tourism hospitality industries, this is where we speak about predominantly food waste, because the definition of food waste implies that food was wasted because of um, either direct or indirect human involvement, such as, for example, we produce too much meals, uh, too many meals in the kitchen, or sort of we did not finish our meals, so therefore we generated plate waste. So when it comes to the tourism hospitality industries, um, according to very conventional estimates, um, these industries uh, generate at least 15% of global food waste. And I would like to emphasize that this um, uh, estimate is really conservative and is most likely to be an underestimate because some empirical studies in um, some countries of the world, such as China, they pinpoint a large uh, higher number. For example, in China, a good colleague of mine, Professor Wang, um, claims that um, the tourism hospitality industries contribute with more than 50% of the national food waste generation in this country. What is also important to mention at this stage is that the precise magnitude of the food waste challenge within the global tourism hospitality industries is largely unknown. And the report which was published by UNEP in 2021 has acknowledged this uh, big limitation because only nine countries from around the world, or only 4% of all countries and territories from around the world, they have food waste estimates from the tourism hospitality industries, which can be labeled as high confidence. So the rest of the world has no estimates whatsoever. And this is a big, big challenge from my viewpoint because there is a very good uh, saying in business management. If you cannot measure something, you cannot manage that effectively. And the primary reason why uh, there are no estimates for uh, food waste in the sector of tourism hospitality is because the sector is extremely diverse. So if you think about restaurants, so we have uh, casual dining restaurants, fast casual dining restaurants, we have fine dining restaurants, quick service restaurants, and on top of that, we have street food vendors, we have coffee shops, cruises, hotels, and so on and so forth. So that's one of the reasons why it's so difficult to compile reliable food waste estimates from tourism hospitality. And this also demonstrates that we do actually need more food waste research. We should be concerned with uh, measuring food waste, but also with developing uh, relevant indicators for more sustainable destination management. So just very quickly, uh, food waste is not only a big environmental problem, it's not um, only a big societal problem, but it's also a big economic challenge because um, in the UK, for instance, the research conducted by the Sustainable uh, Restaurant Association claims that food waste accounts for at least 2% of annual turnover of tourism hospitality enterprises. Most food is wasted at the stage of preparation, um, that is in the kitchen, uh, about 50%, but uh, consumers are also guilty. So they waste about 35% of food. And when it comes to handling and storage, such as, for example, you put your food into the fridge and then you forget about that. So that food waste accounts for about 15% of food waste. And when it comes to the top three categories of wasted food in tourism hospitality industries, it's fruits and vegetables and bakery, but also meat. And again, from the business perspective, Perspective. When you waste a lot of meat, it's a disaster because as those and the amounts of wasted food. So um, the chain affiliate enterprises, they do actually produce uh, fewer volumes of food waste. And this is largely attributed to more standardized uh, cooking and serving practices, which they have in operation. Uh, 
There is also a correlation between food service quality and food waste. Up market and fine dining uh, restaurant businesses, they generate more food in the kitchen. This is because they are very much concerned about how the food looks like. So they cut a lot and therefore they chop everything uh, into the bin. While when it comes to quick service, a casual dining restaurant, so these generate most food waste on customer plates, um, simply because customers do not necessarily finish uh, their meals. And there is also a correlation between business size and food waste. And uh, research shows that larger companies do actually waste less food per customer. And this is also attributed to uh, more standardized procedures of um, uh, food um, preparation and uh, service. So when it comes to uh, managing food waste, unfortunately, uh, most tourism hospitality operators, they do actually manage food waste in a very passive manner. So on this slide, you can see a figure which um, well demonstrates a classical food waste management um, hierarchy. So we should ideally prevent food waste. If prevention is not possible, we should try and reuse food waste. And if this is not possible, we should try to recycle that, recover, and then sort of it's the disposal stage. So unfortunately, the absolute majority of the sector, they actually sort of do disposal only. And the primary reason for that is because the sector is extremely conservative. So when you ask them whether or not they would like to compost food waste on site, they just simply say no. They say, we've been doing this for ages, why to change? Then food waste estimates, they often consider to be business sensitive. And therefore, when you go to um, a restaurant manager and ask them how much food they actually waste, they refuse to give you this information and they refuse to speak with you about how they manage this food waste, if at all. For many tourism hospitality enterprises, unfortunately, environmental sustainability is not considered a priority, which is quite interesting because if you look at many academic studies, they claim that, uh, well, COVID has been a wake up call. So apparently COVID has, uh, well, made many businesses think about how to improve their business to become more sustainable. This primarily applies to chain affiliates, but when it comes to the independent businesses, this is not true. And these businesses, they primarily focus on profit maximization because they want to offset the uh, money which they have lost during lockdowns and uh, travel restrictions. However, the future is not necessarily that bleak and there are some glimpses of hope and uh, there are a lot of best practices which do exist from around the world uh, which uh, can be utilized in order to manage food waste uh, more effectively. Uh, the examples from the kitchen, for example, um, artificial intelligence can be used in order to forecast demand and there are companies which um, provide their services uh, to tourism hospitality enterprises such as Prognolite. So yeah, the question is the cost. So therefore, from the managerial perspective, it's an important consideration, but sort of the solutions do exist. I know that many restaurants, especially chain affiliated restaurants, such as those um, at Hilton and Marriott, they retrain chefs on resourceful cooking. I also know that many um, um, enterprises such as uh, Scholars of Sustenance, uh, which is a partner of the United uh, Nations, they um, engage in food rescue in order to redistribute uh, food which was overproduced. And then some restaurants, they operate what they call what's available menus. So they utilize surplus ingredients in order to cook meals. Then there are also some best practices when it comes to managing uh, food waste, which occurs in the post kitchen operations, such as such, some companies, they try to nudge consumers. Um, nudging, for instance, can take the form of uh, reducing the size of plates. And uh, research shows that if you reduce the size of your plates by 50%, you reduce your food waste by one third. Some companies also compost food waste on their premises. Well, space is a major constraint over here, unfortunately. And some companies, they have started collaborating with farmers. The process, which is known industrial symbiosis, whereby um, restaurants provide wasted food to farmers and farmers grow agricultural produce and uh, give this produce to the restaurants back, which is quite interesting. Then um, it's also important to mention that the United Nations have recognized the importance of reducing food waste in tourism food supply chains, and therefore they have committed to this reduction. And one of such nominant, uh, prominent um, initiatives is the One Planet, which aims to outline a global roadmap on food waste reduction in the tourism sector. 
And um, this initiative has created a number of tools which are aimed at helping uh, tourism hospitality businesses to prevent and mitigate food waste, such as the one developed by uh, Pata, um, the so-called Buffy, I find it extremely interesting, or the numerous hotel kitchen tools developed by the World Wild Organization. Unfortunately, and I would like to say that tools are tools, and the question is, how do we convince businesses to utilize these tools. So it's good to have these tools available, but we also need to ensure that businesses use that. And this is my final slide. So I'd like to very briefly elaborate on potential indicators for food waste monitoring at the destination level. So uh, based on my experience and based on the analysis of the academic literature, but also business reports, so quantity of food waste should be one of the indicators because we need to know what we are going to manage. Then the question is here, how do we separate uh, the food waste which is produced by tourists from the food waste which is produced by regular residents in a destination? nation, such as Mallorca, for instance, Palma, that's an interesting question. Character of food waste should be understood because um, some uh, fractions of food waste can be composted, such as fruits and vegetables, but some, such as fats, cannot. Availability of on-site separation for composting and reuse is another interesting indicator because, again, if the company has space to compost, this is great, but if the space is an issue, then it's not so great. The method of collection could represent another indicator because, based on my experience, private waste contractors, they tend to be more effective in composting food waste compared to state-owned. And the method of disposal is important. Is it composting? Is it land spreading? Is it land in the UK, for instance, 70% of food waste is disposed of um, by the method of composting or land spreading, which is not that bad. But still, 30% of food waste goes to landfill, which is a crime from my perspective. And also two other extra indicators. One of them um, could look at the measures adopted in-house by tourism hospitality providers in order to prevent food waste. And here we can look specifically at the measures targeting kitchen processes and post-kitchen processes. And finally, uh, simply because many hotels in popular destinations, they are contracted by big two operators such as Sturia, previously Thomas Cook. So it's also interesting to look at whether or not um, these big two operators, they impose any kind of pressures on um, uh, tourism hospitality providers with regard to food waste um, prevention and mitigation. So thank you very much for your attention. And uh, well, I don't know if there is space for questions um, um, in, the, uh, well, in the end of this, um, uh, session, but if not, this is my email address, and you are more than welcome to send me um, um, a message if if you wish to. Thank you very much.